Welcome. In this lecture, we would focus on understanding folds and types. The previous lectures, we already talked about the stress and strain. We talked about strike and depth. Now, all those concepts would be utilized back here when we would be talking about folds. To begin with, if we talk about the concept of fold, it had been uh, a concept with a long history. Leonardo da Vinci, back around five years, 500 years ago, talked about the concept of fold. Similarly, geometric analysis is not only important to understand the folds but also the types of folds even the hydrocarbons which are trapped beneath the earth's surfaces can be understood by understanding the folds and the topography of that region so how do we understand the fold in the last class when we talked about stress and strain we said that when there is a stress there can be directional stress or hydrostatic stress Directional stress can be of three types, compressional, tensional or shear strain. Here we would talk about the effect of compressional strain. So compressional stress, because of the comp compressional stress, there is a fold which is created. So let's say this is the original length of the rock mass. When there is compression from both the sides, this length would first reduce and then there would be a small nick or a bump which is formed finally leading to a fold and this is how folds are formed now when we have the fold formation we understand with the surface what is the angle being formed and that says the dip angle and these dip angles are important to understand one of the classifications of folds that we would consider later coming on to another important term is a term which is known as pad stick map now these palinspastic maps are those maps where you understand the present day structure and compare it to the original structure before the folding had happened and this is the depiction which helps you to restore the current topography with the original topography and this maps are therefore useful now there are three ways under which there can be formation of the fo folds one is the process which is known as buckling buckling is a process which is considered as an active process so what happens you have compression from both sides as a result there is formation of the fold the next is the process of bending so there is a force which acts downwards and from the center acts upward and there is a formation of a fold that happens the next is a passive fold. Now passive fold I can say is a similar to a shear effect and there is a fold that is created. So shear folds because of excessive passive folding, shear folds are one such example that take place. Now here in the diagram as you can understand, this is the original length. Now this original length when there was compression, as you can see this length gets reduced for the rock mass and then there is further compression there is a bend which is formed so the length which we are measuring was l0 in the first case it reduced to lt and then this lt through the syncline and the anticline can be measured here so l0 is the original length lt is the length after shortening and mu1 mu l and mu m is the viscosity so viscosity of the matrix and viscosity of the layer that we are studying now because of the viscosity there is a change in the shape and this lt in the last section you can see is the arc length so here it's not a straight line there is a formation of the arc so we would understand this as an arc length this concept was written or devised by Huldiston and Huldiston in 1986 talked about the concept of active folding and passive folding. Active folding can initiate when a longer piece of the rock is being shortened through the compressional forces which are active forces in nature. Now understanding the fold structures. So let's have a very simple 3D diagram here. I have a sheet and what I do is I create a fold here. Now when I am creating a fold and understand this in a 3D version. So this, this structure that you can see from the surface. So when you are studying the surface, this is what you would see, right? Now this portion is the surface that you would see. But beneath the surface, this is the structure. 
inside the rock which is available right and this is what is called as the fold now this fold can be above the surface below the earth surface it could be present anywhere but this fold is a chevron fold because it is angular the other fold could be similar to what you see on the screen it could be a round shaped or a curved kind of fold which is there now once you have this fold there can be an imaginary line which in reality does not exist but here i am considering this to be an imaginary line which is cutting across the center right so cutting across the center of this fold is a imaginary line and this imaginary line is what is called as the axial plane or the axial surface as you can see here so in the diagram if i mark this this is the axial surface now when i am putting the axial surface here right understand it this way when i am putting the axial surface here there is one line of the axial surface that i can see and this line is nothing but the axial trace clear now the point on the top is called as what this point is called as the this point is called as the crest the point at the bottom where you have the another fold that would start is called as the trough so the highest point here is called as the crest the point at the bottom is called as the trough right now this point is the hinge point why because you have all the points of minimum curvature maximum curvature or the minimum angle interlimb angle that can be formed so this is the point where you have the minimum interlimb angle that can be formed now very very interesting to understand this point when i draw a vertical line here i take the point of the crest the axial plane and where the axial plane cuts here i draw a line and as you can see this would be the hinge line okay now i have the hinge points that i draw here so these are my hinge points on the surface and below behind it is the hinge line the the 2d surface of it is called as the hinge zone now if the fold is cylindrical right in that case it is not called as hinge line it is called as the fold axis take this example so if it is a cylindrical roll now on this roll if i have a line which passes by here what it is called as it is called as a fold axis if there is a curvature then this hinge line is a curved line this hinge line is a curved line and this is called as a hinge line on a non cylindrical fold on a cylindrical fold it is called as a fold axis on a non cylindrical fold it is called as a hinge line clear so far coming back to our diagram now when you have this structure there are two sides this is limb 1 limb 2 the point where they meet is the crest right so this is the limb this is one limb and then you have the other limb which is here then the angle between the two limb is measured as theta which is the interlimb angle angle between this limb and this limb this is called as the interlimb angle again there is a inflection point inflection point is the point where the dip changes so there is change in the attitude of the bed we already understood what is the attitude of the bed attitude of the bed is understood through uh, through the concept of strike and dip so when the dip changes we say this is the inflection point and the line passing through the inflection point is known as the uh, the the line which meets this and which is in a 3d to it is called as an inflection line now if i want to explain it simply this